Okay, good morning and uh, welcome everybody to our course BC214. We're talking about developing the human spirit. Let's take a moment to pray and then we will get started. We will pick up from where we paused last week. May I request somebody in our class to please pray with us today to get started? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the class we are about to have. God, we give uh, Pastor Ashes into your hands. Uh, be with him and guide him. And uh, I give all my classmates into your hands. God, as Pastor teaches us, uh, the truths in the Bible help us to open our mind and heart and listen to it and understand that Jesus, you're a God who gives us the spirit of understanding. You're the God who gives us this knowledge, Jesus. Be with us and uh, I pray that you will give us good Wi-Fi connections throughout the sessions. And God, whatever we learn, uh, help us uh, to put it into practice so that we can be a blessing to others. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we, we are right now talking about the faculties of our spirit and how to develop those faculties. Um, after we cover this, then we will talk about the functions of this human spirit and how to you know be strong in those functions of the human spirit. So we said what we have said is that we can see in scripture that there are these five faculties of the human spirit. Now we, we of course we are speaking mainly in the context of the believer. Uh, we do keep in mind that even the unsaved person, a person who is not a believer, who is not born again, they also have a spirit, and their human spirit also has faculties, the same faculties, except that they might choose to develop these faculties to connect to the dark world, the, 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 to evil spirits and demon powers. But we... Uh, our context is really uh, the faculties of the born-again believer. So, as a believer, you are our spirit beings, and our spirit has the faculties, abilities, or capabilities. Right? And we said we have these five faculties that we can see in Scripture. And it is through these faculties that God, the Holy Spirit, is relating to us. So when God the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you or communicate something to you and me, he, one of his main ways is he does it through the faculties of our spirit. You know? Now, of course, he can speak to us through the written pages of the scriptures, which he will do. So as you're reading the Bible, you're reading the scriptures, um, the Holy Spirit is going to, you know, take the written scriptures and he will minister to you, right? So there's a combination. There's, a, there's the written scriptures working, uh, speaking to us through the written scriptures. So that is true. But what we are right now focusing on is how God speaks to us through the faculties of our spirit, right? So last week we covered uh, the first one, which is... Uh, what we see and uh, the seeing aspect. Um, we talked about this, that uh, the human spirit, our spirit has eyes that can see, right? Now, what do we see? We see typically pictures, right? So anything that that is a visual, God can use that to speak to us, to communicate to us. So in seeing, you know, we, we said that there are there are a lot of things, categories. Uh, there are, you know, what we refer to as dreams. That means things that we see at night, when when asleep. That means, and especially God speaks to us, speaks to us through dreams, right? So God can speak to us. Now He's speaking to our spirit, even though our physical body and mind is asleep. 
God is giving pictures to our spirit. So our spirit is saying, you wake up in the morning, it comes into your mind, and your mind, oh, I have had it, I've had a dream, I saw something, right? Uh, visions are things when we, we see we normally awake, and God is showing things to us. Uh, sometimes this could be pictures, just, um, they're not necessarily, like, visions are usually things that are happening in the spirit, but pictures are things that you're seeing. God is showing you pictures. Uh, you can see events happening as they are happening in the spiritual realm. Trance is when physical body is suspended and you're seeing this vision or God is showing you something that's called a trance. Uh, you can also see into what is actually happening in the spirit realm. Yeah. So there are many different ways in which this traveling and uh, or the seeing happens. And we said traveling, and God can also show us things in other places, or He can take us in our spirit to other places. So a lot of things can happen um, in this whole thing of seeing and the spirit, right? And if you look, if you do a study in the Bible, uh, you'll find amazing things of how God is communicating to people. For example, you know, uh, if we can just pick out a few examples. God comes to Ananias in a vision. And so you can imagine now, um, Ananias must have been praying one day. You know, he's his disciple in Damascus. He's just, you know, he's just must be having his quiet time or something. And the Lord comes to him in a vision. That means now, God is showing him some, something to the eyes of his spirit. And in that vision, God says, Ananias, I want you to go to this city, to the street called Straight. There is a man named Saul, and he is praying. Okay? And go and pray for him, because I have chosen him. So in that vision, God is giving him details. He's saying which street to go to. You know, now of course, in those days, cities were very, very small compared to our cities. So when God said go to the street called Straight, uh, probably there's only one sit one street that was like that, and maybe a few houses. So it would have been uh, very easy to locate. Uh, Saul, who was praying, uh, you know, he didn't need house number and he didn't need any more details because there probably must have been just, you know, a few houses. So, but God gave him those details, meaning enough details. Go to this particular street. There's this man called Saul. So you can ask, and those days, you know, you can ask somebody, hey, is there Saul here? Yeah, in that house over there, you know, it would have been as simple as that. It's like today, if you go to a very small town or a village, everybody knows everybody. You just ask them by name, where is so-and-so staying? And they'll say, okay, go down there, third house, that person is staying. You know, it's very as simple as that. So, uh, but God gives those details to Ananias in a vision. You see? So God can do those kinds of things to us today. But in this mode of communication, he can give us so many things. He can give us information, how to solve problem, whom maybe to call somebody, maybe to you know give a message to somebody. So through that vision, God can direct us, you know, and he can give us details and things that he wants us to do. Now, uh, we also talked about how to interpret and communicate what we see. So sometimes, uh, what we see is can be literal. Sometimes what we see could be figurative, right? So if it's literal, you just say it as it is. If it's figurative, then you have to interpret and see a symbol. This is what it means. This is what it represents. And uh, you interpret the meaning of that. And uh, if you're interpreting something that's figurative, then you use biblical imagery. That means what do those images mean in the Bible? Therefore, I interpret it that way. You know, so if you're seeing a person, uh, and, and while you're seeing him, God is showing you a tree uh, that is very green and is bearing a lot of fruit. It could be either literal or it could be figurative. It could be literal, meaning maybe he owns uh, uh, a farm where uh, the tree, he, you know, he's actually growing those kinds of trees and uh, and so on. Or it could be figurative. Because the Bible says, you will be like a tree planted by rivers of water. 
So at that moment, we have to get from the Holy Spirit, what is God showing me? Is God showing me something literally that is in that person's life, maybe as a farm, a tree, those kinds of trees? Or is God telling me figuratively that this man is going to prosper and he's going to be very fruitful? Right. So that information we take in our spirit through what we hear. So we are seeing something, we must also listen, hear. Right? So that's in the next chapter, we'll talk about it. Um, how we hear from God, that God impresses on our heart. This is what it is. So you easily know, okay, this particular thing is very literal for this person. So say, hey, God is showing me you have a farm with these kinds of trees. And God is saying, you know, what a, you hear from God, you say it. Or sometimes, God is saying, no, he's like this. Tell him he's going to be very fruitful. He's going to be very successful, not to give up. So then you say, hey, you know, just like Psalm 1 says, God is telling you will be that kind of a very fruitful person in your life. So don't give up. Right? Sometimes God will use biblical characters or incidents or even texts from Scripture to communicate to us. So, you know, he might say, hey, and you know, he might remind you at that moment about David fighting Goliath. And then you tell him, tell this man that, you know, just as David conquered Goliath, he's going to conquer his Goliath. You know? So he's just reminding, he's showing you a picture of David fighting Goliath, but then the message is being communicated to this person through that picture, through that visual. So those things can also happen. And, and of course, God can give us uh, much more details that through the visuals, through what we see. But that's one way by which God is using the faculties of our spirit to speak to us, maybe for us personally, or maybe to uh, um, help, you know, minister to somebody else. You know, like uh, on uh, on uh, last Saturday, I had to go and uh, do uh, like an office, uh, new office dedication for somebody. So, uh, uh, and so I, I knew what the passage of scripture that we had gone to speak about. Uh, so, fine. So, I was, I'd already sent that person, like they're, they're preparing the program for the day. So, what scripture passage? I already sent it. But actually, I didn't have a message what to speak, right? Uh, for that. So, while I was going, I took a cab, we took a cab, we were traveling in a cab from home to that office space. So I was sitting in the cab, I had my Bible open. I said, God, I have to speak from this passage, but I don't know what to say. I don't even know what to say from this passage. And uh, I was reading that, I was reading the passage, maybe I read that passage two or three times, and I was just looking at it. And it was so amazing because at that moment, it was almost like, you know, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but from that passage out came, you know, in an instant, in, in like maybe in a few seconds. Okay, see, this is what, you know, it's almost like things stood out. You know, this is what you have to say. These are the things you have to highlight. And it's almost like God writing out, you know, in front of my eyes, meaning not the natural eyes, but spiritual eyes. These are the things you need to say. So, it, out of that passage came a message in an instant, you know. So then it's like, okay, I, I knew what I just underlined my Bible to make to record what I had seen, and there it was, you know. So, God can do, you know, so many different things that, that He's showing you in different ways, but it's through the eyes of your spirit. Uh, it through in that case, it was through what I was seeing happening, I could get that message and it was like I'm seeing it happening between me and the pages of scripture, something that's being highlighted. Okay, this is what I can communicate to that for that uh, evening in that dedication. So like that, if we train, you know, if our, our spirit eyes are sensitive, we can, God can just communicate different things to us uh, through what we see. So let's move on, talk about the other faculties similar to our seeing is our hearing, right? So uh, our spirit, human spirit, has ears to hear. And we've, we've mentioned this earlier, and uh, we will um, just kind of explain this here again. So Jesus spoke about this, the scriptures speak about this in other places as well. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So 
Jesus is speaking to an audience, he's saying, ears, ears to hear. So he's not talking about the physical ears because everybody was listening to him physically, of course. But he's talking about spiritual ears. He's saying, look, if you've got spiritual ears to hear, then you can hear what I'm saying. You can spiritually understand what I'm saying. This is what he's intending, Matthew eleven fifteen. 15. Same thing, Revelation 2, 7. You know, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So this is spiritual hearing. Right? The Holy Spirit is saying something to the churches. Can you hear that in your spiritual ears? Right? Uh, similarly, there are other passages. Isaiah 30, verse 20 and 21. Your eyes shall see your teachers. And then he says, your ears will hear a word behind you saying. That means uh, this is your spiritual ears. You're being guided and instructed uh, uh, spiritually through what your teachers are teaching you. And here again in Isaiah 50, he's talking about God. He wakens my ear to hear. And you know, God opening our spiritual ears to hear. Right. So it's not, it's, it's not talking about a physical ear. He's talking about a spiritually here. God wakes me up morning by morning, but the hearing is going to happen spiritually as God speaks and teaches. Right? So there are many references like this in Scripture where we can see that uh, our spirit has ears. Now, we need to understand how we hear spiritually. So uh, normally when you're hearing in your spirit, we do not hear sounds. It's not like natural. Like right now, you are hearing sounds. Right? Through uh, either you're sitting in class in front of me or you are hearing through the audio. Um, you're hearing sounds. And that sound is communicating information to you. But spiritually, normally, we don't hear sounds. But it is just a knowing the words or sentences or the information is just imparted into our spirit. So you know, right? it comes into our spirit. So this information comes into our spirit. So that is actually God speaking. So we are saying that is actually you hearing God. That information just comes into your spirit. It is the words of God that have been communicated to you, and uh, uh, it is not through the use of sound, but it's just that the words have been given to you. Now, when I am use speaking now, I'm using sound as a medium to communicate words. And it's the words that are bringing meaning to you. In the same way here, when God puts his words in our spirit, it's those words that I'm giving meaning to us. That means you're actually hearing from God. But it doesn't mean uh, there has to be sound, right? spiritually speaking. Right? Sometimes we see in, you know, examples in the Bible where there's been an audible sound you know, and in the spirit. And you know, there was a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son. Or uh, you know, John says, I heard the sound of many waters, right? So spiritually they hear sound. But that's not normal. We don't always hear that sound coming, but the words come to us. And we know that God is speaking, right? Uh, sometimes it could be a simple sentence uh, or a statement. Sometimes it could be a, a whole lot of information that is just given to you. And uh, it all just comes into your spirit, and you know that this is God speaking, right? So the word of the Lord has come to you, right? It's a non audible impartation of the message. It's not like you're actually hearing physical sound, but God is imparting words to your spirit, and you perceive it, and you're perceiving in your spirit. That means your spirit is able to uh, recognize it and uh, know it and understand it so that's perception it's perceiving in your spirit through uh, your faculty of hearing and seeing now of course you know when god speaks it it's a combination of things although we are talking about 
seeing separately, hearing separately, feeling separately. Many times it's a combination of things. Okay? It's what you see, what you hear, what you feel that brings the full package of the message God is getting across to you. Okay? So we have, we, have, we have to put it all together. Just like and nowadays when we make a presentation, there may be a PowerPoint slide, the person is speaking words, and he's also making gestures with his hand. So you're seeing, you're hearing, and you have, you're feeling his emotion, right? And all of that is communicating a message to us. So that's how God is speaking to us uh, in our spirit, through the faculties of our spirit, and we put it all together. Right? Now, some things to keep in mind is that uh, God doesn't necessarily talk, you know, lots and lots and lots and lots of things. Right? Sometimes it can be just be a single sentence, like, you know, the Holy uh, in Acts eight twenty nine, he says to Philip, "Go join this chariot." Just a simple sentence, Philip, go and join this chariot. So that's all, a simple instruction. You know, he doesn't tell Philip, you know, this chariot will have four horses, and you know, it'll have, uh, uh, you know, uh, it'll be like this, it'll be like that, this color. That no. Philip, go join the chariot. That's it. He doesn't even tell who is inside the chariot. He doesn't say, Philip, be careful. Inside the chariot is a very important person. You know, he's a very important man to the queen of Ethiopia. Nothing. Just say, go join the chariot. You know? So sometimes God gives us a very simple instruction. Um, uh, he's not going to tell us all the details, but that instruction is enough. We have to obey it. Sometimes it could be many sentences. For example, to Peter, he said, Peter, three men are looking for you. Go with them. Don't ask any questions. So a little bit more instruction. It says, there are three men who are looking for you. You go with them. Don't ask any questions. Right? So that's how Peter gets into the house. He follows them, and they take him to the house of Cornelius. Uh, there are times when God will give us personal details. Okay, this man is like this, you know. Or, for example, in the case of this woman at the well of Samaria, Jesus said, he just told us something. He said, look, you've had five husbands, and the man that you now are living with is not your husband. That was a personal detail, which Jesus could not have known in his own thing. But it's okay. So that was the point he wanted to address in that woman's life. You had five husbands, and uh, this is your situation. You know, right now, you're with a man who is not your husband. Right? Uh, there could be some other details. In Acts chapter 5, Peter tells uh, Ananias and Sapphira, did you sell your land for this amount? You know. So, of course, Peter was not there to know that detail. But God revealed that. He said, you know, you sold your land for this amount, whatever that amount was. Peter said, this is how much you sold it. But this is how much you brought. You brought less than that. And you're telling us, you know, you're pretending that the, the, their sin was, they were pretending that they brought the full amount. Right? That was, the, that was what they did wrong. They could have told Peter, Peter, we sold the land for so much, we're giving 50%. Or we're giving whatever amount, but they were pretending they brought the whole. Ananias was pretending. So sometimes, you know, uh, so that's again a detail. There could be a house, apartment number, birthday. So many. God could give other details uh, to show something very specific. And we mentioned this about the house of Ananias or the house of Cornelius and things like that. that where God gives the details, or where Peter was praying, he tells Cornelius, Cornelius. Send your send somebody to Joppa. In Joppa, go to the house of a man called Simon the Tanner, because Peter is staying in his house. So in those days, that was enough address, right? Go to the city of Joppa, house of Simon the Tanner. That was the address. Finished. But that is where Peter was, right? In that city, in that person's house. Today, maybe we need a little bit, we need details. This is the street address, this is the house number, etc., etc. We need all that. God will give all of you know, those kinds of things to us as well. So we see examples like this. And now we've just given a few examples, right? So the point is, God can give us these details, He can give us revelation, He can give us insight, He can direct us into what He wants us to do. But this information is He is speaking. 
speaking to us. So when we say God is speaking, it's not about the sound, it's about the information that comes into our spirit. Right? That information is more important than, oh, did you hear a sound? What did the, what was the sound like? Uh, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So don't worry about the sound. It's about the information that God has imparted to your spirit. That's what you need to perceive. That's what you want to recognize and you know make use of. It may be an instruction, it may be a revelation, uh, it may be a message for you, it may be a message for somebody else. Uh, uh, it may be some guidance in the situation, but that is what we want to become sensitive to, to pick up and then be. Minister. So, um, you know, and many of you would have also experienced this that you may be praying about a matter, saying, God, what is the decision I need to make? And as you're praying, in your spirit, God gives you the knowing. This is what you're supposed to do. It can come a different way. Sometimes He might quicken a verse of scripture. Sometimes he might just place an understanding. This is what you're supposed to do. Or it may be very clear-cut directions. This, 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 this. Oh, okay, I must take these steps. So, you know, God is putting that information in your spirit. He's actually speaking to you in your spirit through your sense of hearing. Okay? And we can train ourselves uh, to hear from God in that matter. Right. Any questions so far? Let me pause. Uh, any questions on the seeing and the hearing? You all with me? All right. So let's maybe cover one more and then we'll pause for today. The other thing, the next way that God communicates to us is through our feeling. Lesson number nine, feeling or what we sense. You know, if somebody puts their hand on me here, on my sh on my shoulder, I can feel. So that's feeling. Right? So there are feelings that God imparts in our spirit, and those feelings itself is a message for us. So we must recognize those feelings, and then understand that God is communicating to us through those feelings. Right? So you know, we can have feelings of joy, quietness, or peace in our spirit, or sometimes it could be restlessness, uneasiness, stirring, uh, or tightness, or discomfort, or bitterness, or you're feeling stirred up or angry about something, or you can feel the weighty presence of God. Right? So there are feelings that also come, uh, and, and each of these feelings uh, carry uh, a, a message. Example. If you feel very peaceful about something, then it means okay, everything is fine. You know? So let's say you're making a decision, you're praying about some matter, and in your spirit there's a sense of peace about it. It means that's a good thing, right? Colossians 3:15 says, The peace of God rule in your heart. If God's peace is ruling in your heart, that's a good thing. That means, hey, go for, go ahead. You know, it's like a green signal. Sometimes you can be stirred in your heart, right? in your spirit. You're feeling very agitated, or in, in a good sense, or you're being uh, you're being stirred up about something. It means God is calling you to do something about it, or you can feel an urge, a compelling push in your spirit. Right? That means God is telling you to do, go into action. Sometimes you feel bound in your spirit, like Acts 20, 22, 23. Paul says, you know, uh, 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 I feel bound in my spirit, but the Holy Spirit is bearing witness that bonds and afflictions await me in Jerusalem. So he has a feeling, and he's interpreting that feeling as a witness of the Holy Spirit in Acts 20, verses 22 and 23. So that feeling is actually a witness of the Holy Spirit. So what you're feeling is a witness of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is bearing witness to you. He's testifying to you, speaking to you through that feeling in your spirit. Is what, you know, what we can learn there from Acts 20, 22 and 23. But in this case, Paul is feeling bound. He's feeling like somebody's tied him up. You know, He's feeling that uneasy, tight feeling. And um, it's like, okay, don't do this. Don't go. But 
Paul was so determined to go, he went and he got into trouble. Exactly what the Holy Spirit told him. And the Holy Spirit warned him to three, three different ways. One, in his own spirit. And then there were two other prophecies that came in the next chapter. Saying, Paul, if you go to Jerusalem, this is what the people are going to do to you. So the Holy Spirit warned him. And he still went. And that's exactly what happened. Um, feeling of restlessness. Now, that means... Again, here, yeah, restlessness or God is, you know, bringing your attention to a certain situation for you to do something about it. So Paul was really restless, um, you know, uh, and the people uh, about what was happening in the Corinthian church. So, say, hey, you have to do something about this. You can't just ignore it. You can't keep quiet about it. You've got to address that matter. Or Ezekiel, right? He was. He felt bitterness and heat in his spirit, uh, like he's being agitated, like or he could say angry uh, to do something about it. Or he could feel the Holy Spirit coming upon him. The Spirit fell upon me, a weighty feeling. It's like uh, as though you know a hand is coming on him. That's it. He's recognizing the Holy Spirit coming on him. Right? So feelings in the spirit are also very important for us. Uh, it's important to recognize it, and it's important to interpret what you feel in the spirit, because that is also a way by which the Lord is communicating to you. Right? So, what you see, what you hear, what you feel in your spirit, these are very important. Right? And usually, when God is communicating, He's speaking through all of these faculties. Right? There may be times he'll just give you a, a vision. But usually it's a vision plus information coming into your spirit plus a sensation, meaning you're feeling something about this. Right? So you've got to put all of that together. It's okay. This is what God is communicating to me. Okay? So suppose. Uh, you're going to minister to somebody. Suddenly, there's a feeling of compassion. And uh, maybe even a feeling of uh, a sense of, uh, uh, you know, you're feeling that that person is going through a lot of pain. Now you begin to feel that, the hurt and what they're going through. And then God is maybe, you know, giving you a picture. Right? Uh, it, it, maybe it's a picture that is showing that this person, uh, and, and, and it come, along with that comes a knowledge that uh, this person, so example, let's say, a picture of somebody being stabbed in the back. And then he's also giving you the understanding that this person has been betrayed. And maybe you, know, you see not just one knife, but three knife, knives at the back. So there is a picture, there is a knowing coming into your spirit, and there is also a feeling. And then you put it all together and say, oh, what is God telling me? This person has been betrayed three times. He's been stabbed in the back three times. And so he's hurting. He's going through a lot of pain. And God, you know, God wants to minister to him. See, so there's a picture, there's a knowing, there's a feeling. And so out, you must yield to it, right? So you yield to the compassion and you say, hey, God is showing me that, you know, you've been betrayed three times, you know. And then maybe God may say, so by whom? You know, by the, maybe the close friend, maybe a family member, whatever. You know, that knowing will come into your spirit. So you see, and, 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 and you're going through a lot of pain and I can feel how much you've, you're hurting, you know, but God wants to heal. He's the one who heals the brokenhearted. He's the one who can do this. And then you, of course, share whatever God is speaking at that moment. But when God is speaking to our spirit, there is a combination of what you see, what you feel, and what you hear. Right? And you're putting it all together, and you are then ministering to people. Right? So we must pay attention to uh, everything. Uh, to all of these 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 things, Let's see, hear, and feel. Now, 
something about the work of the Holy Spirit is this, that we can't explain everything. So Jesus put it like this in John 3, verse 8. You know, he says, the wind blows. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going, but you can feel it. Right? That means, look, you cannot explain everything about how the Holy Spirit works. And we want to know where is the wind coming from? How can you tell? You don't know where it's coming from. Where is this wind going? Oh, you don't know where it's going, but you can feel it's blowing. So same, he says, so is everyone who's born of the Spirit, or this is how the, the work of the Holy Spirit is. I, I, I don't understand everything about it, but I know he's moving. And I can I know he's showing me something. I know he is giving me some mess you know, a message in my spirit. I know I can feel his presence. I know he's there, he's doing so. I cannot explain everything. I can't say where he's coming, where he's going, but I know. You know, that means uh, you can feel, just like you can feel the wind blowing, you can feel the Holy Spirit is speaking, he's, he's revealing, he's showing. Uh, how can I, we can't explain it to somebody else fully in words. But you know, the Spirit of God is at work. Okay. So, let's, uh, you know, similarly, there is a smelling and the tasting. Uh, we see examples of this. This is lesson number 10. Uh, we see examples of this in scripture, you know, Ezekiel and uh, the Holy you know, God told him to eat a scroll and he felt sweetness uh, in his mouth. So there was tasting and so on. Now, uh, we, we just, you know, what we, and I remember this is a spiritual thing, right? But then it, your senses recognize it. So we're not talking about natural smells and things like that. We're talking about what you sense in the spirit. Spirit, and again, this is so hard to describe how it happens, but you recognize in the spirit, you meet somebody and there's like a sweet smell, suddenly you get a sweet smell and you know it's not any perfume somebody put or any deodorant or some spray. No, no, no. It's just that there's a sweetness, uh, whether you sense that sweetness through smelling or taste. Wow, this person is such a gentle spirit, such a nice spirit, or there's a sweetness there. Or sometimes, you meet somebody and there's just such an unpleasantness, you know, and it's okay, something is wrong, right? So, but we have to interpret that uh, a pleasant taste and smells. Well, how do you interpret it? That, that God is pleased in what is happening. Uh, there is an anointing, God is present, God is moving, God is going to bring healing or comfort, or He's going to move in a set to meet a certain kind of need. So, that's the interpretation of. A pleasant taste or smell. If it's unpleasant, then you need to be careful. It's, it's a way of God indicating something, a warning to us, right? Be careful of what's happening. Maybe there's a false doctrine, there's a false prophet, there's some deception happening, there's a demonic power at work, there's an unclean spirit at work, or maybe God wants you to get out of that place, leave that situation. So that is an indication, or don't in involve with those people, so on. So that's unpleasant taste or smell, right? In the spirit. Now, of course, we should distinguish between natural and spiritual. Don't confuse natural smells with spiritual. But this is something that we have to be open to because God also moves like this. And you know, you get that sweetness. Uh, you know, you might say, "Oh, there's a sweet aroma, or there's such a sweet taste to what is being preached and being ministered to, or shared, and so on." And uh, it it is just you recognize it and you understand that God's presence is there in that situation, okay? So we will stop here for today. In our next lesson, we'll, say, we'll talk about how do we train our spiritual senses, right? So we have mentioned these five spiritual senses, what you see, what you hear, what you feel, what you smell and taste. These are five faculties or sen uh, uh, capabilities in our spirit. God is using that to communicate to us. And we must learn how to receive that information and process it. And the training part we will do in our next lesson. I want to pause here and just see if there are any questions on what we covered so far. Any questions? All are good? Okay. Uh, Pastor, one small note. Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, sometimes, uh, would it be possible that when you 
enter a house you in your spirit you smell something bad and it's it's like a garbage kind of a smell and could it be like a uh, presence of an unclean uh, atmosphere uh, mm -hmm. is yes that possible yes 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 so that's one way like maybe you get in you come you either you, you meet some people or you come into a home or a place and then you know you, like you just described it's something unpleasant smell or taste and you know it's not natural it means you know that hey there's not there's not a physical garbage or physical thing is there but that just that sense and you know then that's an indication of something that's wrong it could indicate an unclean spirit the operating of operational demonic powers or it could indicate that this person or the people there they are not right you know they are up to doing wrong things right so then you discern and then you say okay god what what, what are you saying what do you want me to do and then you follow through with what god is saying yeah thank you okay let's wrap up for today we'll just close in prayer and we'll dismiss i know we're 10 minutes ahead of schedule but it's okay um could somebody pray and then we can dismiss please lord we thank you for this time of learning lord we thank you for the words uh, that we heard today lord god we pray that we would continue to um, wait on your presence and to discern what you uh, are trying to tell us in each moment oh god and we pray that we would be able to tune in to more of your presence more of your holy spirit and understand what you are trying to tell us and to communicate with you to see your kingdom come in our circumstances lord we praise you lord in jesus most precious name we pray amen amen thank you everyone thank you for being in class today enjoy the rest of your day i'll see you again soon god bless bye now thank you first